Good evening, race fans, and welcome back to the DRS CCA Sim Series every Tuesday night. Tonight, we're at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, the shorter club-level course, to get ready to send these Titans back out on track the second time of this season. I'm accompanied by Mr. Nick here tonight. Nick, welcome back to the booth, and we've got another exciting show for the fans here tonight. Yes, we do, James. Round two, and this short course is sure to draw out some uh, some fun behavior from these drivers. Now, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen, but I'm going to go ahead and run through the grid here since drivers are queued up, ready to go. Starting on pole, it's Mr. Russell Soto. Robert Cusera starting second. Area Ruder, Ritter, excuse me, starting third. Megan Overstreet starting fourth. Dominic Bates starts fifth. Ryan Carwile starting sixth. Sean Fritz starts seventh. Trent McMillian starting eighth. Ray Hilbert starting 9th, Richard Scheib starting 10th. We've got Steve Kahn starting 11th, Michael Schmidt starting 12th, cycling it on back to Logan McDonough starting 13th, Jason Williams starting 14th, Jacob Mowit starting 15th, Andrew Gross starts 16th, Mike Knudsen starting 17th, Georgie Yaldo starting 18th, Andrew Mowit starting 19th, David Grzynski starting 20th, Garrett Sibley starting 21st, Alejandro De La Torre starts 22nd, Abdul Huda starting 23rd, and then we have got Joseph Newton and Paul Darling run out the field, but it is race time here tonight at Mid-Ohio, Nick, and we are underway as Soto leads the field under the bridge here at the Tricky Sports Car Course. Oh, and already! Oh, already drama, who is that, Mr. Mc... That's a lot of people here. That's going to be oh, Carwile, Ritter, McMillian, McDonough all tied up in that one. I think Georgie Yaldo is going to be tied up in that one as well. So already Ooh. having some big hits coming in. That's going to allow Soto and Kusera, the 177 machine, to kind of check out as the field makes its way around Spectator Hill. And man, oh man, what a violent start to the racing here at Ohio. That first corner, this short course, it draws out the crazy. Uh, every time you drive mid-Ohio, you run the full course, and these drivers did not expect that quick right-hander, and they paid for it. Yeah, mid-Ohio known for being a very, very slick racetrack as well. The uh, the surface, extremely slippery to make your way around. And now, thankfully, it looks like the sun is beaming down on the track as we watch this heated battle for seventh, Michael Schmidt and Sean Fritz having a show here in seventh. That's stacking the field up behind him as well. You've got McDonough, Kahn, Gross, McMillian all over here in the fray. And I mean, this is just allowing the top guys to kind of put the hammer down, check out and see if they can leave everybody behind them. But also they know they got to do what they got to do right now. This is a really hard course to pass on. With the lack of that back straight, a lot. Ooh, and we got a spin. And oh. we got more spins. It's carnage up here. Logan McDonough finds himself pointing the wrong direction. I think that's Michael Schmidt also involved that in the 129. Let's see if we can get a replay queued up here. We'll see what happened to McDonough in that incident. So we're focused in on the number 32 machine. So far, so good. Heads into the keyhole and just two drivers and... I don't know if you saw that. Did you see somebody else Andrew launching in Gross. the background? I saw Andrew Gross go very evasive to avoid that. I'm not sure if that was the move, but at least he didn't hit anybody. Yeah, I mean, all, all's fair in love and racing. Now, up front, it's still Soto making it look easy, clicking off laps. Very impressed with these top two drivers, Soto and Casera. Casera's doing everything he can to keep that number 50 machine in pursuit here, but... Just not quite having the luck. He's looking, I mean, he's three tenths off the back. What do you think, Nick? Is he going to be able to catch up here? I think that, again, it's a half hour race, kind of like we saw in VIR. Maybe they're not in a hurry to make a big move right now. They've already pulled almost three seconds on the rest of the field. And, oh, uh, no, Kusera's looking a little aggressive there. I think you're right. I think he wants it. Yeah, I think he's going to be going for it here really, really shortly as he is on the hammer trying to make something happen. Now, I'm a little surprised. This is about in, the only corner. Yeah, in the past, we've seen these guys kind of take it easy and not push too hard too early on, but it seems like they are very hungry to get out there and continue both racing and, you know, trying to get away from the rest of the field. And versus VIR as well, you have a huge draft effect. I was listening to the drivers earlier. They were talking a second and a half you can gain in the draft at VIR. Here they were saying maybe a tenth of a second. So they know they got to race hard right from the jump. They can't rely on that draft. Yeah, exactly. The short 
tough track here. Making it a little bit difficult. I'm going to see if I can get an onboard with Mr. Kusera piloting that 177 machine. And Kusera has been very smooth and consistent. While we have a bit of a moment here with the onboard action, I want to give a shout out to the Detroit Region Sports Car Club of America, a.k.a. DRSCCA. They've been providing motorsports events since 1948. With over 1,400 members, there's no shortage of knowledge, history, and trailblazing ideas like this Sim League. So thank you to the participants and spectators for being a part of the augmentation and evolution of the region. Nick, so right on Soto's bumper. Yeah, right in the middle of that ad read. He was taking a peek to the inside. I think that was through Keyhole as they make their way through the spectator area here at Mid-Ohio. So Casera definitely showing a wheel, that 177 machine, trying to get a little bit further up into the action. And Nick, if we go back a little bit, Ritter, the 27, had a rough start. And look at that. It's Moet and McMillian really leaning on each other. As, oh, I thought he was about to catch a corner panel with oh. that 24. And, yeah, they're bumping and grinding. They are. First to the inside, trying to get a line on a Moet. Now, very briefly, I saw Soto trigger my broadcast software with an off track. Oh. And something is going on here, Nick. Kusera has made the pass for the lead just five minutes into this feature event. I wonder if Soto went a little bit deep on the brakes in the carousel there and Kusera was able to get around. Let's see if Kusera can get away from him now. Let's check it out. There's Soto, the number 50 machine. Where is the opportunity going to come from for Kusera? Yeah, I think you're right. I think... It almost looks like, so oh, look oh. at that, flat tracking around goes Soto. Went a little deep, tried to carry a little too much speed through there, and he paid for it. So now for the first time tonight, that number 50 machine is going to be playing second fiddle to Kusera in the 177. Kusera's had the opening five laps to kind of pace Soto here, see where he's fast at. And now he's going to try and break away. And look at this freight train. We're checking back in with Ritter, that 27. A rough start. And you can already see a lot of it. Is that Andrew Gross, I think, missing a whole lot of body work on the front of the 69 machine? It is. Almost yes, looks like a, a super modified more than a spec Ford racer. I, I don't actually think we've seen a car rip that much body work off this season and stay out on track. Maybe he took my comment about the uh, draft. Oh, Ooh, and he gets a little loose. Oh, and he's going to lose places. Now, Nick, do you think that's from Maybe the lack of arrow? He very well might be. It might have also just been pressure, all those guys behind him, and uh, that's a really tough corner going into Thunder Hill there. Now, I want to see. I was trying. I was hoping that we were going to be able to see Gross's feet from that camera angle. <laughs> just miss out on seeing the pedal action. We'll have to talk to iRacing about the uh, the rendering there. Yeah. <laughs> Trent, Trent McMillian is going to come down pit road to get repairs. The number 24 machine. We go back up to Richard Shive, the 79. He was a guest here just a couple weeks prior, and he's finding himself in battle with a Sean Fritz. Second, that, that is going to be the battle for sixth out on track. Scheib in the number 79. Fritz, the number 19 machine. And, man, just great racing all across the circuit here tonight. It's these cars. They really lend themselves to this close, aggressive racing. And I was able to get out in one on Mid-Ohio earlier this week. And they, they're not the easiest thing to wring time out of. You overdrive these cars, you're going to pay for it. And speaking of great racing, I also want to give another shout out to another sponsor, Waterford Hills Road Racing, Metro Detroit's only permanent sanctioned road course. Waterford Hills, located in Clarkston, Michigan, hosts a six-weekend race series, competition driving school, nine public open track days. The track is hot from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on these event days, and it's open to the public, and it is a whopping $5 to get out there and watch the spectator action. Check them out, waterfordhills.com for the details. Meanwhile, out in front, Kusera and Soto have grabbed another half a second on the rest of the field. Yeah, it seems like Soto's not going to let Kusera break away here. Staying right around that three-tenth mark, and now I wonder if this is going to be an opportunity. Is That's an interesting opera moment that Abdul had there, the number 21. <laughs> I think he saw the blue flag and very quickly took an alternative line to get out of the way of the race leaders. <laughs> 
And, and you were talking about Mid-Ohio in this car. You're right. Very easy to drive the car. And Mid-Ohio, a very technical track. Very little runoff for these drivers as well. So one little mistake. And there's guardrails in what they call, I believe it's the beach they call after the keyhole. That big swooping right-hander. And then, so this is a good example as they flick it back out on the start finish line straight. There's just a little bit of gravel run out there. And then another concrete barrier as Kusera clicks off a 116.09, about two tenths faster than Soto here. So really not succumbing to the pressure too much. Staying very smooth, very consistent, and, and just kind of making it look easy. Soto definitely falling back just a touch. I'm sticking with him, though, just like in VR. I like, uh, I like my man Soto there. He's hanging in with Kusera. Gonna put a little, keep the pressure on Kusera and see if he can't make a mistake. Two other close drivers out on track. Megan Overstreet, Dominic Bates, third and fourth on the circuit. Overstreet, a very beautiful 044 machine. I can't quite tell what that livery is. We'll try and get a close up here shortly. Getting chased by Bates and that number 14 machine. So these guys are guys and gals, I should say, running very, very well out there. Can't quite tell what's on that spec forward racer, but probably one of the uh, the sharpest looking cars we've seen out so far this season. That is some great design. If we go back a little bit further, Ryan Carwile, Richard Scheib still linked up seventh and eighth. Carwile down one spot from where he qualified. Shabe up two positions thus far here tonight. And look at that, a little bit of damage on the right side of Ryan Carwell's racing machine. So, I mean, these opening two or three laps, I think just about everybody was tied up in some sort of incident, except really Kusera and Soto who have broken away from the rest of the field. And as I say that, I think Soto is going to show a wheel here. Pulls up alongside Kusera. Kusera is going to guard the inside line, and Soto tries the long way round. But he set himself up just right for that uphill. Now if he can hold. Yeah, and then he's good for the S's. Soto with the pass. Really good racing amongst these guys out here today. So back and forth, back and forth, up front for the lead. Soto with a, not a great exit in Thunderhill there. Ooh, Soto in the grass. A lot of alternative lines being made here tonight. The one of the fans, E. Morton Automotive, yeah, let me know. It's kind of right. It's called China Beach, the end of that long, I, I really wouldn't call it a backstretch, but we'll watch him go through the uh, the quick switchback here. And Yeah, China Beach. Okay, thank you to the fans for reminding me on that one. I remember my first sport bike race here. Somebody blew that corner, and it's... um. It's a very banked bowl corner right before the spectator hill. And if you miss your brake marks, it is a quick way to absolutely launch yourself, your car, your bike. So right here on the other side of this corner is China Beach, the fans letting us know. And you can see the banking there as well. Drivers can kind of wedge those cars in a little bit and it gives you a little bit more uh, ability to throw it in deep. That's true, but the cambering is also a little bit weird in there. You'd hope that the corner would catch you a little bit more as you crest. But if you're not careful, you'll get it loose as you uh, top that hill, and you'll be, uh, you'll be out there. Now, something fun a local at Ohio told me one day is the, uh, the very small downhill right after Spectator Hill. If it's a good, cold, rainy day in Ohio, if you stand on the track, you can slide down the asphalt. It's so slippery. Now, I know they recently did a repave out here, which is not quite shown in the sim yet, so hopefully getting a little bit more more bite for those drivers. But hands down, I think it's the most slippery course in the U.S. I, uh, I myself was victim of mid-Ohio in my Miata. It was raining a little bit, and I, I spun off probably two or three times. And... I'm a little scarred, but I can't wait to get back out there with my new car. Speaking of spins and sliding shenanigans, David Grzynski is going to take a ride in the 75 machine. Oh, oh no, he was checking up to avoid uh, getting to Andrew Morid. Moed, excuse me. So it was kind of making a mid-corner adjustment and sent him sliding around. Another good battle out on track. It's Schmidt versus Williams in the battle for 15th. 
And we've said it every week, but every time we pan the camera around, uh, around here at a DRS CCA virtual race, there's somebody having a battle somewhere out on the circuit. Absolutely. And again, shout out to the organizer this organizers of this DRS CCA. Great car for this series. Yeah, a lot of fun to watch. Another sponsor shout out. I want to give a big thanks to Michigan Turn Marshals for their support this season as well. If you want to get close to the action, be sure to check out michiganturnmarshals.org. They can train you to support races like the Detroit Grand Prix. Grand Prix, you might see them at Waterford Hills Raceway. And without those track marshals, we would not have racing to go to across the country. So big thumbs up to those folks. Now, we had another incident as well, Nick. Looked like it was Yaldo. Had an incident and then immediately went down, I think went down pit road following. Let's see what happens here. Looks like a little bit too much grass and around he goes in the final pair of corners. Another sponsor we want to give a shout out to Super Lap, located on the world renowned Woodward Avenue of Berkeley, Michigan. Super Lap is a sim drive studio, a space to meet and compete. With professional grade simulators, they are premier racing and drive experience venue. They will help you achieve your motorsports goals with education, practice, and training. Maybe you're familiar with the world's most famous international Formula One series. Well, their absolute best driver is a proponent of sim racing and training. So if it's good enough for Max Verstappen, it should probably be good enough for you. And look at this. You know who else has been using Superlap? Soto and Kusera. They've been checking out Superlap.world for all the information as we see yet another pass for the lead. And now there's lap traffic on the horizon for the race leaders. Six and a half seconds ahead of the rest of the pack. These guys are looking it. Yeah, this is great racing. Now, we've, we've had great races like this all season long, but... Sometimes it was punctuated by a little bit of misfortune, but glad everybody's able to wick it up here tonight at Ohio. And wonder if maybe with this being a Detroit-based region, if a lot of our racers here tonight maybe have some seat time in mid-Ohio mid -Ohio, and maybe not coming into it as blind, such as a real southern track like Road Atlanta or Barber, which is very far out the Detroit region. On one hand, though, that may be hurting these guys with the short course. I know I'm used to the long course and coming out of corner one and then immediately having to get into that right really threw me off when I was driving this uh, this version of the circuit. Yeah, good. it's a good way to run a familiar track but also keep it nice, exciting, and a little bit different for these drivers as Soto and Kusera still going back and forth here. Kusera trying to get the inside line of that 50 machine. And we've got more traffic diving into turn one. I think that may be Grzynski in the number 75 machine just ahead of these race leaders. No, it's not Grzynski, so I'm not quite sure. That is the 24 of uh, McMillian who hops out of the way there, sees the race leaders right behind him, and nothing but respect amongst these drivers, not wanting to get tied up in somebody else's races. So well done to McMillian. Having a bit of a rough go here tonight but still has the uh, forethought to hop out of the way when these guys are right in tow. Shout out, by the way, to Andrew Gross. He's up six places this race, holding it down. He's uh, keeping Knutson behind him and uh, seeing if he can't catch up to Shiv there in the ninth place. But shout out to Andrew. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, overcoming diversity so far here tonight this season. And speaking of Andrew Gross... Like you said, he's up in the 10th. There is Logan McDonough way off track in the steep grass here. So that's going to give a chance for Mike Knudsen to get there. And the 383 machine trying to challenge back. Andrew Gross missing the front body work. And I'm, I'm very impressed with how Gross is able to hold on to that car here. Me too. The iRacing damage model is pretty good, and I imagine that's upsetting the car a lot, not having that body work. Yeah, the lack of the lack of downforce in the front of that car, we don't know if he's got any suspension damage he's trying to overcome, so definitely putting the hammer down and driving through a tough go here tonight. There's Schmidt and Williams 
Still having that battle for 15th. Now up front, it's still Soto Cusera first and second. Megan Overstreet sitting in third. Bates and Hilbert rounding out the top five. But, Nick, we've only got a lot, about 11 and a half minutes to go here tonight in mid-Ohio. And I think all across the field, there's a lot of unknowns on how the cards are going to settle here tonight. There is. This is definitely the lull in the storm. You can see there's some gaps around, but I think it's going to transition to an exciting end of this race. Yeah, I I'd still don't know how this is going to pan out between Soto and Casero. Like you said, compared to VIR, we don't have that super powerful draft at play, but we have a ton of lap traffic as Soto absolutely throws it in the number 50 machine. He's going to get around Grzynski, and I think that was De La Torre as well hopping out of the way. So that's, that's, hard. that's a tough corner to get out of the way in, but he did a pretty good job. Yeah, that's super. I mean, there's really not a ton of great places to hop offline here at Mid-Ohio, but that is, uh, that's what years of experience and wisdom will get you, knowing the track well enough and knowing what the car is going to feel like off the racing line and still being able to stay, stay super, super smooth and avoid any major catastrophe. And a big thumbs up to Soto as well. I mean, absolutely hucked it in there. <laughs> it if, if it was anybody but Soto, I would say, man, that was dangerous. But these front runners know exactly what they're doing when it comes to navigating through the field. Very skilled. Jacob Mowid trying to fend off Michael Schmidt in that battle for 14th. Jason Williams trying to rejoin the party in the number two machine. You've also got Logan McDonough, Andrew Gross linked up for that battle for 10th. And yeah, it seems like about three, four different battles going out on track here tonight. And everybody doing a super good job. We still have all 23 of our 23 starters out on the circuit. Or Trenton McMillian down there. 14, uh, down 14 positions. A couple off tracks there, a couple uh, spins. And it can really, really hurt your race. Yeah, luckily these guys are all in it with championship mindset. So they're going to stay out there. Even if things are going wrong, they're going to stay out there, click off laps, keep those visors down, and heads forward. As something has happened to one oh, of your no. picks, Andrew Gross, the 69 Andrew, machine. My man. He's going to lose oh. his spot to McDonough, to Knudsen, to Kahn. So let's see what happened to that student driver. I think that's the lack of front downforce there. It's very possible the rear is what came around, though. Again, that's another weird hill as you're going into the carousel. You, you're you hucking it in from the wall on the right side, and you crest this hill, and you're not quite sure how far out you can track, and I think you might have just gone into it a little bit too hot. Oh, here we go. Oh. Kusera and Soda still side by side, oh. leaning on each oh. other here. Kusera's going to have the line. And he's going to take back gonna, over the race lead. I think Soto wisely backed might, out of it. But he might be setting up for this run right here. Now, with a track with a track like Mid-Ohio and in the abbreviated, the, the short course, the, uh, the club track is what we call it, is there a good time? I mean, historically at VIR Road Atlanta, you don't usually want to be the lead driver in the last lap. Really don't have that that uh, that drafting play in the back pocket here tonight. So I wonder... If these guys are playing a little bit of cat and mouse saying, no, you lead for a little bit, no, you lead for a little bit, or is this just every every guy in the top two elbows out just sending it every lap here? Oh, speaking of it. send it. Soto almost got into the back of Kusera. He was hard on the binders. So I think that answered our question, Nick. I don't think they're playing cat and mouse. I think these are elbows out, and every each one of these drivers is doing everything they can to make it happen. I don't think so. And especially coming into this last section in the carousel, I'd love to see Soto's perspective and the line he takes and the way he tries to attack Kusera through there. Well, we are in luck as we get the onboard queued up for Mr. Russell Soto. And as he's tucked in behind Kusera, I want to give a shout out to our last but not least, one of the great sponsors we got this season, Whitlam Group, your first choice for all your labeling needs. Whitlam Group provides a variety of labeling solutions, including packaging, promotional, engineering, brand security, print on demand, and custom solutions. Located in Centerline in Michigan, Whitlam has a heart as big as their labeling options. 
They give back to their community by supporting the Children's Hospital of Michigan, Adopt a Child Project, Sweet Dreams Projects, COTS Detroit, Animal Welfare Society, and much more. Please visit our friends over at Whitlam.com for details. And a big thumbs up to those nice folks supporting the series here tonight at Mid-Ohio. Great race in between these two. Interested to see, we've got a little bit less than six minutes left to go here. Lucera and Soto still knows the tail. Soto's going to take a peek to the inside line. There's contact between the two. Touch. That's going to put Kusera off track. I think Soto realizes, kind of throws a virtual hand out the window and says, hey, I'm sorry about that. Gives Kusera the spot back, but these guys are definitely on the limit here. Soto called him out on the mic, too. There's definitely a little bit of frustration here. Interesting to see how this one's going to play out. I mean, these guys have built up a nine-second advantage over the rest of the field. It is their race to lose at this point, but they're also losing a little bit of time. Overstreet just clicked off a 116.82. Your race leaders both around that 117.25 mark, so the pace slowing down as they are elbows out here. Now, with a nine-second advantage and five minutes left to go, I don't think they're in too much danger, but... I think the last thing either one of these guys wants to do is throw away a perfectly good race when they've been putting on one of the best shows we've seen all season. It takes me back to VIR last week where Soto and I think Hilbert got caught up and they spun and Carwile went through and these guys better be careful about that. I don't think the gap is as big as it was last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. It is uh, way too late in the race to have any sort of big moments that these guys could hopefully avoid. I'm extremely impressed with how clean things have been. I mean, all things considered, we've seen a little bit of bumping and grinding up here in the top two, but these guys have put on a great show. I'm hoping this thing's going to run all the way out to the checkers like this. As you can see, with a little bit less than back and forth that lap, they both dropped down to the 116.35 second mark. And Soto continues to follow Kusera here. And seeing what he can do and what opportunity might present itself. I think there's going to be a little bit more lap traffic in the horizon with Garrett Sibley's number 13 machine. And I think I just saw a bit of a blink there from Soto in the 50. So, oh, a big blink. Oh. Did you get that on your end as well, Nick? I did. Okay, so it's not just me up here in the booth then. So that's a little bit of a relief after how tonight's show started. But... That, the drivers also don't want to have an iRacing red flag as well decide this. We've seen it before in other series where the sim will drop a large portion of the drivers if there's a supercell somewhere in the country. That is one of the downsides to an online sim, and sometimes we're at the mercy of the weather gods, but looks like that's cleaned up a little bit, and we get to watch these guys race a little bit more as they come out into the final corners here at Mid-Ohio. Like and out of the way. Yeah, Sibley knows what's going on behind him. He can hear that radio, too, and he wants no part of it. Oh, Soto I've all been... over the back there. Speaking of uh, last week, I've, uh, I've been keeping my eye on Ray Hilbert. Hilbert up five positions. Uh, it looked for a minute like he was catching up to Overstreet there, but for the last couple laps, he's held pretty close. Looking like uh, fourth place oh. for Hilbert if he can. Oh, so close. A mistake there from Kusera. Now, I almost wonder if Soto's kind of backed out a little bit after that car to car contact is thinking about those championship points and more so necessarily than a race win. And as he said, Hilbert has been gaining a lot of ground on that number 33 machine, not just tonight, but every race we've seen him out on track. Getting more and more comfortable behind the wheel of the sim. I mean, he's got a bunch of experience on iRacing. Has ran a whole lot of officials in the past, but good to see him coming out, getting a little bit more comfortable. And oh, oh and around no. goes Soto. Soto spins. Soto got into the back. He got into the back of Kusera hard on the brakes. Hard Watch the this. Brakes. Did he come in too hot? I don't know if he came in too hot or. Oh. 
Was that a tap or was that him? Uh, I think him so. Overbreaking? Let's get Ooh. one more. One more angle queued up here on board with Russell Soto. Definitely seeing a chink in Soto's armor here. Oh, a little bit of a tap. Yeah, I mean, you you can say Kusera was on the brakes early or Soto wasn't. Was I mean, ultimately, Soto hit Kusera, and that's what kind of took away the race uh, winning hopes of that number 50 machine. Man, Soto's going to be mad about that. Yeah, there'll be uh, the words in the virtual paddock after this one. But thankfully, with sim racing, nobody has to pay to fix their cars afterwards. So you can have a bad race and still save thousands of dollars. Look at Ritter and Carwile, seventh and eighth. Carwile's down two spots, Ritter down four. And hard charger tonight, though, is going to be Mike Newton, the 383 machine. Right now, Newton up seven positions, running just inside the top ten. And. I think that this is going to be the white flag lap for Robert Kusera. Victory lap for Kusera. I don't want to say anything too soon, but Kusera looking good for sure. You've learned about the commentator's curse from last week. I'm impressed. And let's see if Kusera can avoid it here in the 177. There's Fritz still running six in the number 19 machine. The rest of the field starting to catch up a little bit behind. But let's pan back over. Robert Kusera's got a half lap left to go. The flame painted 177 machine. Real matchbox car vibes out of Kusera tonight. Qualified second up one spot. And looking really good here. Barring some massive amount of misfortune to pick up a big win here. Fought hard the whole race. Soto pushing him the whole race. Coming into the carousel. And the checkered flag is out for Kusera. Picking up the win here at Mid-Ohio. And let's pan back. It's going to be Russell Soto bringing it home in second. And Megan Overstreet with her first podium here at the DRS CCA Tuesday night series. Great racing for Megan. Not easy to keep those quick drivers behind you and Megan put in a solid race. A great drive all the way around. We're gonna work on getting these top three drivers up here to victory lane. Speaking of that commentary, uh, commentator's curse, I might have given it to Andrew finishing in 16th place, his original starting position. All the way around, a lot of fun watching these drivers coming out, putting on a show for us here tonight. And we're going to get Pusera, Soto, and Overstreet up here into the top three. We've got Soto join us. Now just waiting on Kusera and Overstreet to really get this party going. So looks like just about everybody's here just waiting on Overstreet at this point. But what grace, great racing from these drivers here tonight, Nick. Absolutely. Great track, great car, and some of the best drivers around. Let's see if we can get everybody up here. Looks like we've got everybody. So we're going to start things off with Megan Overstreet. Join us in third. Megan, you got a copy? Yep, gotcha. Megan, great race out there. I mean, a debut in the podium spot. The 044 machine looking super clean. Kind of walk us through your race from behind the visor of that 44. That's pretty fun. Uh, other than the uh, turn two incident where I got rear-ended real bad, uh, the car had decent pace afterwards, so I was just trying to hot lap and try to catch back up to the leaders, but they were just too fast for me to catch back up. Megan, you were talking about that chaos at the beginning. How uh, how are you feeling maneuvering all of that? 
Uh, well, after I got rear-ended, I was on the brakes pretty hard trying to avoid killing anybody else. I think I got into uh, one other car just a little bit, but I did. I don't think I spun them out. Luckily, I was able to keep everything under me, but I got hit real hard. I was looking like almost 45 degrees down at the track whenever I got lifted up. Megan, I got good news for you. The car that you thought you hit was actually spun out and came into you. You were a very, very clean racer through that section. Nice. Well, Megan, good having you up here in the top three for the first time. A great run, besting a lot of fast drivers here at Mid-Ohio. Hopefully we see you back out at Rolanta. But before I let you go, sign off and unwind from that one. Who do you want to give a shout out to that helps make this third place possible for you tonight? Thank you all for putting on the broadcast, everybody at the DRSCCA for putting on this event, and everybody that's watching at home. Thank you all so much. No worries. Thank you for joining us, Megan. Hope to have you back up here next week. Yep. See you all later. All right, Nick. That was Megan Overstreet. Join us for her first podium debut. Up next, we've got Mr. Russell Soto to join us in the second place spot. Soto, it seems like there's uh, going to be a little bit of bodywork adjustment needed after Mid-Ohio here. Yeah, just a bit. I mean, uh, you know, it was uh, an unexpected uh, slow down through the corner. I, I didn't really see that coming, uh, ha you know, that late into the race. And with the tires all completely chewed up, uh, there was a little time to react. But yeah, um, you know, we keep pushing. I'm always hungry for that win, still hungry for the win. And I know it's coming, you know, so it's just a matter of uh, keeping keeping our heads strong and going forward. Russell, that was definitely a roller coaster of a race for you. Uh, watching you and watching how you attacked Kusera and watching uh, a little bit of Rubens racing there and saw you. I, I felt like I saw you take a breath after that first contact and you uh, you got back and you, you kept it strong. But in the end there, it looks like uh, uh, the stress might have gotten to you a little bit. I think it was uh, just an unfortunate case of events of being just a little bit too close coming into the last corner. Um, and with the, the car the way it was, uh, yeah, it, it was easy to make a mistake. I mean, we were just millimeters off each other for most of the race. But yeah, Definitely. congrats to Robert. You know, great drive. Well, Soto, Definitely. always a lot of fun watching out on track, man. We go to my home track, Road Atlanta, next week. Are we going to see that number 50 machine on the top spot? I know Road Atlanta was not kind to you last season. What's the plans for redemption? Man, Road Atlanta is going to be that one race. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to miss. I'm going to be away for the holiday, but I will Dang be it, there. Dang it, Soto. <laughs> yeah, I know. All I'm right. about it, too. <laughs> well, Russell, always a pleasure, buddy. Always a good time. Looking forward to having you back Thursday, Thursday night up here in the top three as well. And before I let you go, who do you want to give a shout out to that helps you bring home a second here tonight? I'd love to give a shout out to everyone in this stream, as, as usual, DRACCA for just putting on a great show and Team Goon Squad, of course. Um, I'd like to this time make a special note of uh, shouting out Alex De La Torre for all the work he's done, honestly, and helping out this league as well as everything he does for a DRSCCA. Um, I know I'm the guy who's been kind of like the, the poster face for, for running everything here, but Alex has done so much, and I, I just want to give him a shout out. And as well as Robert for putting on a great battle, um, that was well driven. I, I think he deserves it today. So. Oh. Well said. Got to give love to our old friend, Alex. Soto, always a pleasure, bud. Hope to have you back up here next week. Thank you very much, guys. That was Mr. Ra Russell Soto join us in a second. But up next, the man of the hour, Robert Cusera, the 177. Welcome to the top spot here at Mid-Ohio. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> Now, Robert, that looked like a ton of fun from our perspective up here in the booth. What were your thoughts going through the helmet for uh, for the duration of that race? You really didn't get a chance to breathe at all during that one. Yeah, no, the laps were very short, and uh, the biggest thing I was focusing on was just hitting my marks. In some areas, it's a little tricky on the brakes, um, and I think Russell maybe found that out. I, I don't know if he just wasn't paying attention where I was braking, or maybe I was braking a little bit too early for him or something, but... There's a few instances where he gave me a little tap mid-turn, trying to get me loose, give me the old chrome horn. But, uh, yeah, I just focused on hitting my marks and just staying consistent and hopefully keeping the car under me the full race. Well, it seems like... A, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> definitely a high-stress race. And last week at VIR, we were talking about the top three maybe working together a little bit. I don't think there was any working together this week, right? It was all attack the whole race. Yeah, no, this track definitely doesn't uh, benefit too much from the draft, so it's pretty racy for the most part, and you don't have to worry 
too much about slowing down and people catching up to you. So it was definitely a back and forth for a majority of the race. And like you say, those blind corners are tough and coming into carousel, it's a tricky corner. And I got to congratulate you for hitting all those marks, especially in the beginning when you were behind Soto. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you guys all for putting this on. It was an awesome event and definitely a better uh, Tuesday night than most. That's for sure. Well, Robert, next week we go to Road Atlanta. What's the plans for the 177? It's my home track, so I'm excited. What's your feelings about it? Ooh, I don't know. I think the biggest thing, again, is just going to be keeping it on track and hopefully finding some uh, buddies to draft with because I think the draft's definitely going to be a big part at the, that round. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. But, Robert, welcome to the top spot, my friend. And now you've got the privilege, the pleasure, the final send-offs of the night. Who do you want to give a shout to that helps make this win possible for you and the team? Yeah, no, I definitely want to thank uh, my buddy uh, Ray Hilbert. He's been helping me uh, get ready for this event. And I want to thank uh, the Midwest Spec Me Out of Circle Jerk. They've been uh, practicing throughout the week for uh, these events. And uh, I, think, I think we've all got a good head count for a majority of the events. And uh, I want to thank the uh, Detroit Region SCCA for putting these on. It's, it's been a pleasure. So I'm looking forward to doing some future races with you guys. Awesome, Robert. Pleasure having you up here. Hope to have you back up here more throughout the season. And again, congratulations on a massive win here tonight. Yeah, thank you, guys. And that was Robert Cusera Join us in the top spot. Nick, we had a 30-minute race, an absolute heater. We had first-time winners, first-time podium finishers, and a whole lot of carnage here at the Sports Car Course in Ohio. Yes, we did. Very different race to VIR last week, and uh, a couple of the drivers really rose to the challenge. Awesome. Good having you up here in the booth on behalf of Detroit SCCA Sim Series, DRSCCA.org. My name has been James East with Team Goon Squad Broadcasting, accompanied by the world-famous Nick Rennell. Thank you guys all so much for spending your Tuesday night with us, and we'll see you Thursday night as the DRSCCA races Miatas. Have a great night, everybody. See you then.